online with us, Minister of Health, Terence Dial Singh. Minister, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning to you and all your listeners. Thanks, Minister. How are you this morning? Not too bad, just watching the weather. <laughs> yes, of course. And I'm, well, Minister, it's going to be a good day for the Ministry of Health because I know that you guys are rolling out the booster population for the over eight, well, the booster program, sorry, for the over 18 population. Can you tell us a bit about that? If, for example, we can start with maybe who is eligible to go down to the mass vaccination sites e this morning? E yes, thanks, thanks a lot. So today marks a significant day in the government's fight back against COVID-19 where we are offering those 600,000 odd people who have already been vaccinated, and congratulations and thanks to them, an extra layer of protection to make sure that they don't get COVID by launching today the booster program. The booster program is available to persons already vaccinated. But what we are starting today is a phase rollout to allow people who got their second shot or their one shot of GNG um, by a certain date to come in in a nice orderly fashion based on when they receive their last shot. So for example, if you got AstraZeneca between the 1st and 18th of June, that's the second shot, you come in now between the 13th and 18th of December to receive your Pfizer booster. If you got your Sinopharm second shot between the 15th and 18th of June, you come in today between the 13th and 18th for your Sinopharm booster. And similarly for Johnson Johnson, if you got it between the 22nd of August to the 21st of September, you come into the 13th or 18th of December to receive your booster, which could either be a Johnson Johnson or Pfizer. No, for those who I... receive Pfizer, that booster program, the science tells us to start after six months, you receive your second dose. So they will be receiving their boosters in March of 2022. So that is basically how we are rolling it out. Uh, we have our full page press ads in two newspapers this morning. It's up on the website, it's up on social media. So basically it depends on when you receive your last shot, you come in uh, uh, from today. Um, in, in, in batches of weeks to get now, your boosters. Now, Minister, I heard, um, for, for example, for the AstraZeneca, they are going to be given the Pfizer booster shots. Are those combinations okay? Because I know some people had some concern about mixing the vaccines. Yes, yes. so thanks for raising that. So the, Ash, so the Pfizer booster um, to boost AstraZeneca is a safe, um, is a safe regime. It has been approved by WHO when they looked at all the evidence where AstraZeneca has been used uh, for the first and second shot, and where Pfizer has been used as a booster. And that is why we are only going with WHO-approved uh, combinations of vaccines to give the population that degree of safety. Uh, Minister, I just want to jump in here. Morning. I understand that, that there's a phased rollout, but I'm curious as to how did we decide on the, on the time frame uh, for the different ones. So, for example, the, the AstraZeneca, you said from the 1st of, eight, of first of June to the 18th of June, if you got your second dose then, then you're eligible from today. Uh, as compared yeah. to the Johnson & Johnson, for example, when it started on the 22nd of August, but you're also right. still eligible from today. Yes, because the different vaccines, when WHO looks at the data, the different vaccines platforms, their immunity wanes over time in different amounts. Okay. So how Johnson Johnson, what, what WHO um, looks at, is at least about three to six months. Um, AstraZeneca, again, six, six months. And that is, so it is not a fixed thing for all vaccines. It depends on what the evidence shows per vaccine platform. All right. Very interesting. So like and for I, Pfizer, I... it's six, six months. So that right. is why we are not giving out Pfizer boosters now. Until because March. those um, second shots were given out in September. Right. So those people are pretty well protected right now. And it makes little sense to boost somebody who received Pfizer, whose immunity is very good at this point in time. Understood. And I, I also noticed that you guys have 17 locations for the vaccine booster. As compared to when we initially started vaccinating people, we had, uh, I, I believe it was over 60 different places that you can get the vaccine. Are you at all concerned about people crowding the different sites? Well, that is why, so when we first started, 
back in the day in with AstraZeneca, we would do not have health centers, which are small facilities that can't right. handle crowds. Right. What we have done now is move to mass vac sites. So like the paddock. The paddock is a massive site that could do about a thousand, two thousand a day. A health center could only do about fifty a day. Okay. So that is why we are moving to these seventeen mass vac sites across the five RHAs in Trinidad and Tobago that could accommodate crowds. And I'm glad we did it because look at the weather this morning. There's no way a small health center could have accommodated a large crowd this morning yeah. with this type of weather. Um, so we chose the mass vac site because you could be accommodated in large numbers with shelter, uh, with proper screening, with proper um, uh, uh, distancing and so on. Now, Minister, as you mentioned, the mass vaccination sites, um, is the ministry looking to boost the, the, the nurse complement who would be administering the vaccine at these sites? Well, staff have already been allocated by the RHEs. Remember, these sites are run by the RHEs. So the same staff complement we would have used prior is basically the same staff complement we are using now. And actually, we have less mass vaccine sites right now. Um, but we will look at demand and see how we need to bring on more if necessary. Right. Now, Minister, the, the 12 to 18 population, I'm assuming that they will not be vaccinated because they would have received the Pfizer, mm -hmm. correct? And so they are covered until the next quarter. Yes. So we are looking again at the science and data for the under 18. And things are going to change between now and March. So right now, we are only giving the boosters to the 18 and over who will receive either AstraZeneca, Sinopharm, or Johnson & Johnson. Now, Minister, we're rolling out the program alongside the already existing vaccination program that's happening already. How do you expect the crowds to be at the, at the various uh, vaccination sites this morning? Okay. So we have already been given out the extra additional primary doses over the past few weeks. We have been doing about 2,000 a day in that, in conjunction with first doses. So it's not to say that today is something entirely new in terms of crowd. We have already been doing 2,000 a day under the additional primary doses, and we have reached about 40,000 already. So this is a continuation. The crowd may be a bit bigger, but that is why we chose the mass vac sites again to do this and not the health centers. And with this weather this morning, it turned out to be the right decision to make. Now, Minister, I'm going off topic a little bit. Um, as we're talking about vaccinations, I know that the World Health Organization is also testing uh, the vaccinations on the younger population, the under 12. Um, does the ministry or the government have a stance on that as yet for our population? Yes, the plans are already there. We are just waiting approval of the actual vaccine. Um, there are two vaccines before WHO for approval for the 5 to 11 age group, that is Pfizer and Sinopharm. And um, we have our plans already. We are just waiting for the actual go-ahead. We have already approached um, um, Pfizer through CARFA to ex express our interest um, in getting those vaccines, and everything is in place to obtain them. For that 5 to 11 group, once approved by WHO. Okay. And Minister, does the, the government have any other plans to get any more vaccines? I know you just mentioned CAFA, but any plans to get any more vaccines? Because I know we got, I think it was Pfizer recently. We also got the G&G &G and the Yes, yeah, so we got in about 300,000 doses of Pfizer. We recently got in 84,000 doses of, um, of um, Sinopharm. We have close to 300,000 doses of Johnson Johnson. So right now, we are very well, not fairly, very well stocked with vaccines, but we are always in talk with the vaccine manufacturers, CARFA, CARICOM, bilaterally, um, to put our names down as being interested um, in getting more vaccines. So if and when the need arises, we are in, we are in the dance, so to speak. <laughs> Minister, are you are you concerned that the, the rate of vaccination has been stuck in the 40s for the past uh, few weeks, uh, maybe even months? Yeah, so I have made no secret of that. That is an absolute tragedy for a country like Trinidad and Tobago that has all these vaccines. 
Uh, we have been stuck at about the, the, the 40 percent, 46 percent mark now yeah. for a couple of weeks, and um, it's an absolute tragedy when you consider how many unvaccinated persons are dying every day so needlessly. Um, a lot of these deaths now are needless and have been needless for a couple of months now, when all people have to do is just get vaccinated. So, but um, people have their choice. And um, as I said, I don't agree with their choice, but I have to respect it. Um, but vaccinations are going to save lives. We, this, 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 I am, I am afraid that we have become numb to these deaths of 20 a day. And yeah. it's so unnecessary um, if people will just get vaccinated. Minister, is there any plan or any thought about mandatory vaccinations at this point yet? I mean, considering that we've been stuck at the 47, 46, 47 percent. Just repeat the question. Um, repeat I'm just the wondering question if you guys have started, loud, louder, please. If you've started thinking about mandatory vaccinations just as yet. So that is not a conversation for the Minister of Health. I think the Honourable Prime Minister, um, I saw over the weekend and been speaking to someone from The Guardian, did float that idea. But that is a decision to be made by the Honourable Prime Minister um, leading a cabinet discussion. Minister, and I guess finally, um, anything that you want to tell the population or any way else you could, you could possibly persuade them to go out there and get vaccinated? Because I know that you said mandatory vaccination might be a bit above <laughs> your level. So what is the ministry doing now to just encourage those who are unvaccinated to go out there and take the shot? Well, if you would notice our messaging, again, based on feedback, based on focus groups, we are now employing... Um, um, opinion leaders, um, especially targeting that 20 to 49 age group. So we have Marcia Miranda, we have Nisha B, Ravi B, we have um, Soka Artis, we have Paul Kings Douglas. Now, given out the messages that vaccines are safe, vaccines are reliable, vaccines are effective, uh, we continue to talk to people in companies literally one on one. Uh, we go into communities. You would have heard the Attorney General said we took this um, vaccination program into his community, literally one by one, and he got seven persons. We took it into the port about a month ago. We spent the entire day at the port authority talking to port workers one on one. You know how many we got to be vaccinated? Seven. <laughs> so. Um, we understand vaccine hesitancy around the world is being driven by social media, it is being driven by Facebook, it is being driven by people who don't have your best interests at heart. And what I could tell the population is ignore social media. It is not working in your best interest. Yeah. The people but propagating these anti vaxxers message on Facebook and social media and WhatsApp and Instagram do not have your best interests at heart. And we see that every day in the death figures. So just minister, go out there, believe in the science. Uh, thanks minister, to I just want to jump in, I just wanna jump in here for a sec. Get vaccinated. Minister, can I just jump in here for a sec? I'm looking at my immunization card right now, right? And I got my, I got my second shot on the 26th of June uh, this year. But it also says on the card that that expires in 2023. I'm curious as to what changed that that requires a booster shot now rather than the, well, the expiration of Which brand of vaccine? Pardon? Which brand of vaccine Sinopharm. did you get? Sinopharm. Right. And what date? The 26th of June. Right. So if you look at the schedule, I know, but I'm, got I'm asking because it also says on the vaccination card, right where I got the, the signature from the, from the nurse or the doctor, it says that it expires on the 12th of May 2023. Yes, that is the expiry date of the batch of vaccines you got. Okay. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up because I know people would see it and they would think that yes. the, the vaccination we that they got in their arm would last the card, that long. The batch of vaccine that you got and the expiry date of that batch. All right. And that is common practice decades now. Where if you look back at your old vaccination yeah. card, yeah. is you will see that they would always put the batch num number. Okay. Well, Minister, thank you okay. so much for, for joining us this You're morning welcome. and for sh All sharing best. with us. Cheers. Thank you, Take Minister. Take care. Enjoy your day. <laughs> That's the Honorable Terence Yal Singh, the Minister of Health, uh, letting us know about the vaccination booster.
rollout program mm -hmm. that starting from today if you've been vaccinated with AstraZeneca from the 1st to the 18th of June you can head out today and get your booster shot if you got Sinopharm from the 15th to the 18th of June okay. you can head out from today and get your your booster if you got your Johnson & Johnson from the 22nd of August between 22nd August and 21st of September you can head out today and get your booster shot if you got the Pfizer Relax till March. Mm -hmm. <laughs>